just going up with uh, Alyssa at Viking. We're going to do a morning flight here in Deland, Florida. Okay, so I guess, uh, you know, I took my first flight today in uh, Aero Adventure. No, in uh, Aero Adventures uh, Aventura here, and this powered by the, the Viking 130. So obviously I wanted to go up myself and see, you know, what it felt like, what it was all about. Um, prior to that, I hadn't actually been in any kind of seaplane outside of, you know, floats. Um, so it was really interesting. The, the greatest part, it's probably the most fun airplane I have flown to this point um, being able to go on onto the water it's a nice smooth landing it was a lot smoother than I thought it would be and um, being able to get off the water stay low go through the marsh uh, it makes it a very versatile airplane and that that was a lot of fun for me so it was something that I got to experience that I haven't got to so uh, I really enjoyed it good good I concur <laughs> so yeah I mean obviously we fly these all over the place uh, a lot of different engine options but with the Viking 130 we have plenty of power um, ability to go real low clear trees still clear obstacles land in tight lakes go places where normally you wouldn't really be able to go in a different style airplane so we had a blast it's a lot of fun okay I guess as far as as far as the engine performance um, what's your what's your take on that Alex I mean you've flown behind a lot of different engines I have <laughs> yes, it has a lot of thrust, so that's one of the one of the advantages of having this type of engine set up on this aircraft is because it gets us out of the water and breaks that suction, which is really important when you're dealing with a hull type design. Um, so having that is, is crucial. We can swing a much bigger prop, obviously, with your gearbox design and setup and the power, and that gives it that extra oomph. Yeah. Um, it's nice as well because in cruise we can run that lower RPM setting and still get the speed that we want. So overall, from an efficiency perspective, from quicker takeoffs, from um, just going more places, this is by far one of the best ways to go. All right. Uh, now, how about like fuel burn? Uh, do you know the numbers you're kind of reading as far as a fuel burn on this guy? Yeah. So we're we're still in testing, but we're definitely well under five. I mean, in the road taxes, we normally get about 4.7, 4.3 in cruise if they're pitched for climb. Okay. Um, whereas in this one, we're seeing a lot lower than that. In fact, uh, I haven't filled up since the last three flights, and we just came back, and I'm about to go up again. So, yeah, yeah. plenty of fuel. Now, very now, let me ask you this. I mean, you're saying you're being, you're able to get the cruise that you want out of the airplane. Um, you're able to get the speeds you want out of the airplane, and able to get off the water the way you want to. Um, let's say you were building your own personal plane. Uh, did you? Would you? Would you go the route of putting the Viking 130 on there? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I definitely would consider that. That wouldn't be an issue at all. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, I really appreciate you taking me up there today. No it, was, it was a great experience and to be able to see what the aircraft itself can do. It, we, you know, we recently acquired our own Aventura, so it's kind of putting a kick in the butt to kind of get it done and get it up in the air. I'm excited. So, I'm excited. all right. Well, thanks, Alex. Speed that we want.
So overall, from an efficiency perspective, from quicker takeoffs, from um, just going more places, this is by far one of the best ways to go. Your climb rate, your cruise performance, uh, What's going on with the Aventura, with the Viking 130 up there? Yeah, so we're definitely seeing, I mean, obviously we get off off the ground pretty quick. Uh, one of the, and we went over that briefly, but one of the aspects with this type of setup being that it's uh, behind the center of gravity, gravity, our thrust, we ease in the throttle. So if we gunned it, we'd get a lot shorter, but you know, we're looking at 250 to 300 feet easy to get off the ground. Um, we're getting about a little over a thousand feet per minute climb, single pilot, yeah. two pilots, we're still averaging about 800, I would say. Um, and then off the water, it's very, very comparable to uh, what I would expect for a large, you know, horsepower and large thrust engine. We're seeing under 400 feet, probably clearing off the water very easy. So. All right, that's awesome. That's and what we like. Cruise-wise, I mean, like we we talked about it on the way out. We yeah. were doing uh, a little over 80 miles an hour, okay. and uh, we were only at what 46, 4700 RPM. So yeah, exactly. It's definitely a mover. And we're running the low RPM with the speed on this airplane. And yep. as far as, uh, what is the V&E on this aircraft anyway? It's 105. It's 105. So we're reaching close to what, you know, the plane is comfortable flying at as far as the top performance. Correct. And yeah, it'd be really easy, obviously, if we leveled off and left power in to reach V&E. So we, we don't want to do that, um, given it's high performance with this type of setup. We want to bring back that throttle when we level off. So yeah, keep it right in that, that yellow range. Okay, so it's giving you the performance you need to get off the water. And you're oh, still yeah. able to pull back and uh, to cruise exactly where you're wanting to. So. Yep. All right, yeah. Well, I guess we're gonna, we're gonna go over a little bit about the engine and how it's set up on the aircraft and uh, why it's set up the way it is. So one of the design features, obviously I like the upright just because it's designed to run that way in the vehicles as well. So it keeps it uh, closer to what it's designed to do. And obviously Honda does quite a bit of R&D. So it keeps it really nice on that end. Um, one of the things we did with the bed mount here is it really helps triangulate the structure as well under the stick of root tube. And we run it at six degrees of incidence, which gives us a much better cruise um, performance because now the prop and the thrust is directly in line with the body, the airframe with itself, being the, the boom tube that's under here. Um, and we've, we've done a couple different variations. I mean, we've ran zero, uh, we've done four on the road taxes and then all the way up to six on these types of engines. One of the advantages we see um, is we, our nose doesn't tend to nose over as much as opposed to having to zero. Um, one in the in the air, when you cut the throttle and push in the throttle, your nose will tend to go up or down, but you can easily compensate for that with the stick. Uh, but it does give us that extra cruise oomph that we like, and then when we're on a step, it gets us out of the water a lot quicker. So via testing, this has proved to be the optimal uh, kind of performance in reference to where we have it mounted now. And as far as like vibration, you're not really, I, did, I know when we were flying, I didn't feel any vibration in the airframe no. at all. There's, there's no vibration. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we don't, we haven't had any issues um, with the vibration or, uh, you know, just in gunning the throttle, the engine tilt, none of that. It's very, very solid. Now I as mean, far as like starting so. and, and starting it and shutting it down. Um, oh, very smooth. I mean, I, I, one, of, one of the compliments I gave Jan early on with this engine was um, the, the shutdown. Because with a Rotax, you shut it down, it's, you know, it shakes violently. Whereas this one, it's very smooth to yeah. the point where it's like, it just kind of tapers itself down. Duh, 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 and yeah, stops. it's just easier on the engine. So, it's yeah. easier on the airframe. Everything. Oh yeah. yeah.
lake are we on? Uh, this is Lake Woodruff. Okay, this is awesome. Can't beat this, huh? <laughs> this is something else. The water right there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa was just saying, it's just the most fun she's had in an airplane flying oh, yeah. this. This is a great little airplane. Uh, you guys should be here. <laughs> We're just trucking around, and like you said, uh, the water is right here, and uh, You guys should have been here for the landing. Super smooth. We're flying, we're floating between some alligators and boats and everything else. Yep. Beautiful out here. Now how which how does it dominate? Like which float's gonna be in the water when you're just kinda hanging out like this? It all depends a little bit Who's on the weight. Or... Fatter, so it looks like I'm a little heavier. <laughs> so yeah, um, the other thing with turning you can use adversity off so that helps tip with other spots. If I go this way, you know, maybe that sponsor will be There we go. Now I can get it to go to that side. I just got fatter. Yeah, by returning. Did you get anyone that's, you know, really into fishing that want to buy one of these and go out and fish? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I have a sonar in the white one in mine. It has a fish finder built into the dash. Wow. Yeah. Now, if you catch a fish, and you want to bring it home, how do you do it? You can either throw it back here in a cooler or that seat's completely removable in under a minute. You can put a cooler right there by yourself. Isn't that something? Yep. I'm having right. all this room up here, which a lot of the competitors don't have. You can use the cast right over the windshield like that. Or just out here, you can even troll off the sponson, pass that way and then the line catches right in there and it drags it behind you. So wow. if you get something, it'll pull you this way. You line up with it, you reel it in. So it really can be for everybody. Oh yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. 